I'm always glad to meet with young students because they're the hope of the future. The old generation is tired and uh, sticks too much to the old precedents. And for centuries we have glorified war making. And I think the time is urgently upon us now to stop that and turn to the peaceful resolution of all disputes, no matter what they are. We get a report, something going on in a town called Buchenwald. Looks like the people are starving. They're wearing rags, and uh, we don't know what they are. Well, I get into my Jeep and head for the camp. I don't want to describe them again, as you've noticed. I have difficulty with that. But dead bodies all over the floor. Their eyes just peel, appealing for help. Excuse me, but uh, these memories are very real for me. I said, I want 10 men immediately surround the Shrive Stupa, the office. Nobody goes in or out without my permission. And immediately collected whatever documents were there. Thank the methodical Germans. They had, very simply, all the inmates of the camp, who was in charge of the camp, when they came in, when they went out, when they were dead, etc. I went from one camp to another as fast as I could, collecting the evidence and move on because the front was moving very quickly. One of my assistants came to me one day and he said, look what I found. And he gave me a big, loosely folded book. There it reported the activities of groups called Einsatzgruppen. Einsatz means action, Gruppen is groups. It was a name given to a group of men to disguise what their assignment was. Their assignment was simple, and I had the minutes of the meeting. Kill every single Jewish man, woman, and child you can catch. No pity, no remorse, nothing. Wipe them out. The Jewish blood has got to be erased from Germany like you would any other insect. They had then reports every day from the front. How many Jews they killed in whose town? When all the Jews were finished and killed everyone, Judenfrei, free of Jews. I took a little adding machine and I added them up. When I reached a million people killed, I said, that's enough. I flew from Berlin to Nuremberg. I talked to General Taylor. I said, we have to put on a new trial. He said, we can't. I said, I have in my hands clear evidence of mass murder on an unprecedented scale. You're not going to let these guys go. He said, can you do that in addition to your other work? And I said, sure. I had never tried a case in my life. <laughs> so I became the chief prosecutor in what turned out to be the largest murder trial in human history. Genocide, the extermination of whole categories of human beings, was a foremost instrument of the Nazi doctrine. I picked the defendants on the basis of two things, their rank and their education. I had about six SS generals and I had 22 defendants. No enlisted men by doc, of course, only high-ranking officers and with doctor degrees. One of them had two doctor degrees, Dr. Dr. Rush. He killed 33,271 Jews in two days, 29, 30 September, 1941. But what about the rest of them? That's no equal justice if you only select a few. I thought if I could get a rule of law which would protect all people, that would be an important contribution. And so I asked the court to affirm by international criminal law the right of all human beings to live, live in, in peace, peace and, and dignity, dignity, regardless of his race or creed. The case we present is a plea, a plea, a plea of, of humanity, humanity to, law. to law. Now, President Eisenhower was also on our side. He was the Supreme Commander in the big war, my war. When he became president of the United States, he said, that in a very real sense, the world can no longer rely on force. If civilization is to survive, it must choose the rule of law. You need a permanent international court. How do you do that? I was invited to Rome when we had a conference of all the nations in the world, over 100 countries. 
I was given the honor of being able to address them. I uh, said, I have come to speak for those who cannot speak, the victims. And uh, I told the assembled delegates, the place to act is here and the time to act is now. And a hundred nations signed on to the court. Unfortunately, the United States was not one of them. And Hitler was able, with his propagandists and Goebbels and Goering and so on, to lie to the public, to convince them that they were being threatened, convince them that they were the greatest, really, before they were penetrated by these Jews. And have you heard lately? We are the greatest. We are the greatest. We are the greatest. Make America great again. Adolf Hitler made the line of lying to the public, letting them feel that they were endangered by one special group which was fit only for annihilation. And the same type of argument comes from the White House today. And I'm concerned about it, except I'm 99 years old. So I'm concerned only for your benefit, not for mine. But I'm alerting you to it. Do whatever you can. Everybody can do something. Don't tell me you can't do something. This little guy from Transylvania with no money in him whatsoever could do as much as he can do. You can do something too. You're teachers, you're human rights specialists. So you've got to work on the people so they're not afraid to vote their conscience. You're doing that. Keep doing it. Do it loud and clear. And I say, I give you three pieces of advice. One, never give up. Two, never give up. Three, never give up. you got it. <laughs>